um, anyway. Um, so first on the agenda today, um, because we thought Brooke was going to have to leave quickly, um, is, but turns out she isn't, uh, is viewer managed marketplace. So Brooke, why don't you introduce the topic and get us started. Sounds interesting. Yeah, so hi everyone. It's been a while since I've seen yeah, you I all. See you. Um and uh so um so I, I think most of you uh were around when we launched direct delivery and uh had to make some changes in the viewer to be able to support that. Um, one of the things that we've been experiencing over the life of direct delivery is that it's uh, much more of a challenge for merchants to manage their inventory. Um, and that, you know, I mean, as you all know, being developers, the more you move things around, the more likely there are to be problems. Um, so, uh, and then two, we hadn't, weren't able to fully complete the functionality that we needed to get everybody off of magic boxes. And that's supporting, uh, it, the, any inventory items that a merchant does not have rights to copy. So, you know, like you raise a breedable and then you want to sell it to somebody else. You have to use a magic box today or sell it in world. Um, and so we are nearing the end of that project, um, but I don't want to scare you. Um, we plan a very long migration period. So, um, so our timeline is looking like the earliest that we would start forced, uh, like forcing people to use um, any new stuff is in March 2015. So... You know, we're talking long lead time, um, but basically the, the changes that we've made are um, instead of the merchant outbox, we are allowing, we're basically creating a, a special folder that people can put their marketplace inventory in and they will be associated with a marketplace listing directly from the inventory server and will be delivering that inventory right from that special folder to customers. So um, this is, you know, we, this feels like um, it's, a, it's a much better model um, for stability. And, you know, we've taken some of the lessons that we've learned from Magic Boxes and the way we did direct delivery at first. Uh, what this does mean is that the viewer has a lot more interactions with the marketplace because uh, what we're going to allow people to do is provide, you know, is list or unlist uh, a, a listing um, and uh to go through and basically, you know, right now with the merchant out box, you send something to the marketplace and create a listing. Now you're going to be able to create a listing from the viewer. Uh, and so, uh, so there's more detail that we can, we can go into, but we're getting close to having something on a DD for you all to take a look at and try out. And we're getting a project uh, viewer, set up and ready to go to help support that. Um, we're hoping to have something later this month, um, it might be early November, uh, where people can go try things out. Um, as part of that, we're going to be um, up providing some uh, knowledge base articles in a, you know, like, here's a draft of the knowledge base article, uh, so people can understand from a consumer perspective what is happening, and then um, we also need to update our developer-focused documentation, and um, and that's something uh, that that uh, Baker will work on, and um, and I'm um, and Mar so Baker's been doing the AIS work to support this AIS v3, um, and we're adding additional functionality there, and Marov has been doing the viewer work here. So um, if people don't have questions for me right now, I can hand it over to each of them and they can give you a little bit more of a technical explanation on uh, 
what changes were made. That sounds very exciting. Cool. Um, and we did, we got some feedback from merchants on how this is going to work um, to make sure that it made sense to them. Um, and, and we'll also be, you know, including them um, to get feedback while we're trying this out on a DE. Uh, so some mm -hmm. of you, uh, you know, there may be some overlap in, uh, in seeing those. I have a question with regards to this. Is this going to have any effect on the ability to be able to change permissions with the object if we have full permissions out? Um, I'm, uh, what, what do you mean by that? Okay, if we have an object that we have, say, um, that contain items from other, other creators that have licensing agreements that permissions are set to be set a certain way, such as no copy, no transfer, and we accidentally make a permissions error and set, accidentally set the item full copy, will we be able to change that from the inventory? So, um... I'm sorry, we just had like, uh, I'm, I'm uh, working from a co-worker's place and we just had dogs. So you're asking, um, dogs barking, sorry. Um, we are, you're asking if we, if you can change the permissions of items when they're in the inventory, in your inventory in order for the, um, and still keep them listed? Yes, basically in a sense that's to a degree what I'm yep. asking because you're saying this is something that's going to be done through the inventory. So if we change the permissions, this is going yep. to be something that's going to be reflected on Marketplace when we've done that? It will be. Yep. Cool. That's our goal. Um, there are some complexities with no copy items because um, we have to treat those differently because essentially we have to look at them like units. Like, you know, each no copy item is a unit. And so we're, you know, we're setting those up in a, in a different way than non no copy items. Cause non no copy items, we don't need to know how many you have. We don't care, you know, but with no copy items, we need to know. So we're not creating copies out of thin air. Are you saying that the whole interface for making a marketplace listing is in the viewer? including the images and everything? No. So um, so it's just going to be very, very simple marketplace uh, functionality. So creating a new listing, associating inventory with an existing listing, um, and the ability to list or unlist. Everything else is going to require going to the marketplace web interface and doing things just like you do today. This is going to work within the inventory itself, or are you going to have a separate panel for it? It's going to have a separate panel, um, and we're going to hide it in the main inventory floater. Uh, I mean, obviously, like we have, we'll have some debug settings that will allow it to be visible, but um, yes. It, Cinder, it is more like managing the inventory of your store than the store itself. Um, I'm, just, I'm just asking that because uh, with um, RLVA in our viewers, uh, and that ties heavily into inventory. And anytime there's inventory mm -hmm. is made, it's a bit of a nightmare for us. So that's why I ask anyway. Yeah, I mean, it'll be very sim similar to the received items folder or the merchant outbox. Um, so I, I do want to make sure that Baker and Marov have a little bit of time to, um, yeah. give you guys a quick overview and, and I don't want to take up too much time. Obviously we'll be giving you a lot more information in the future. Um, but let's let, um, Baker, do you want to give us a little overview of what's happening on the inventory side and then Marov, um, let's have you you know, sort of talk about the, the changes in the viewer, which I think we've already covered a little bit. Um, so, Baker, why don't you go ahead? Um, okay. Uh, most of the changes have been made to pre-existing, uh, uh, like, code that's in there already. Um, I've just sort of enhanced uh, some of it. So, this is the public uh, API, API uh, v3. 
that you would be able to use uh, to call your your, your uh, various uh, methods in, inside our, our web service. Uh, most of this is going to actually be handled by Marketplace. The viewer is going to request a, a message to the Marketplace, and the Marketplace will end up hitting hitting this. So there's not there's not a whole lot that's going to be publicly facing, except for getting the responses. And in that link, uh, you'll see what the response schemas look like for each call. Um, most of the things that I'm doing is, is part of category, the category resource method, um, or the category resource. Um, there's going to be a few additions to this, such as uh, the stock remaining, so that you'll know how much stock is left. Um, uh, there's not a whole lot left. Like like Brooke was saying, there's um, I'm going to have to I'm handling stock items a little differently, and I'm uh, getting the transferring of of items and everything worked out uh, right now. So mainly, it's going to be just how you use it normally. Um, there shouldn't be much. Special, oh yeah, sorry, stock is, is a no-copy item. Um, there's a few things that uh, right now there's some validation code that I haven't put in yet, um, and I'll be putting that in while we're, in a, while we're on a DD or whatever. Um, there's, there's not much for me to s uh, discuss about back-end stuff unless anybody has a question about something. Server that I can answer. So let's let's go into Marov quickly. I want to make sure both of you have a chance to present some info, and then we'll defer to Oz on how much time we have to answer questions. Okay. So uh, on the viewer side, the uh, the way the marketplace listing is implemented is very similar to what Merchant Box was as far as the UI is concerned, which is we have a separate panel. Um, also, the folder actually exists in the inventory. It's not seen in the inventory. It's hidden. Uh, in normal case, there is actually a debug setting to sh to make it show so that if you need to troubleshoot, you can do that. Uh, there is a few button, which is a toolbar button. Uh, specific to, a, to to the marketplace. Um, what is different is uh, we don't use the ASV3 actually from the <laughs> from from the viewer to handle a uh, transaction on the marketplace. Uh, that's actually only used in the back end when the delivery occurs. But uh, as far as the viewer is concerned, we don't need to use ASV3, which we do use. It's a new API, which is the SLM API that allows us actually to get the list of all the listings uh, and uh, their status, if they are listed or not, if they are you know, for sale or not, uh, what kind of version folder they use, etc. And uh, we merge, if you want, this data coming from the SLM API with the inventory API so that we, we display actually for each listing not only uh, how it shows as far as the, the hierarchy of items, etc., and folders, but also if it's listed or not, uh, how much stock uh, is available, and if it gets to zero or not, etc., etc. So uh, more information, and that allows us to actually to uh, allows you um, as merchants to uh, handle the inventory and um, add things if the stock goes down or change. There is also a notion of version folder. Maybe that Brooke may want to to explain that, which actually allows the user from the viewer to, I mean, the motion from the viewer to change from a version of, of a listing to another version of the listing. So, um, which API is used? Have hard time hearing. Uh, could you keep in API name? So that the SLM API, and uh, just realized that actually, I don't think we have actually a public version of this yet. Uh, but since it's called from the viewer, I guess we're going to have to make it public somewhere. <laughs> um, yeah. Exactly. Is, uh, is this um, the same API that is used for a merchant outbox? The same <coughs> sort of API? Oh, well, the same sort of API, yes, but uh, it's not the same one. So. Because I, I have uh, spent hours and hours trying to troubleshoot problems with connecting to marketplace when the merchant outbox will just fail to open. And there are some problems with open ID authentication for some users. So I was really hoping you will be moving away from that sort of API. Um. The, uh, so what is the difference with the API, the uh, merchant out box? So we're using actually a cap uh, from uh, that we get on the region. So we're using through the cap. We're going through the cap system. 
uh, and the uh, transaction packets actually JSON. We're not using LLSD for those. Uh, so that's actually allows the uh, same API to be used by the web application and the viewer. Did that answer your question? If it's a capability, then it's a it's a different system than what's currently being done for merchant outbox. Yeah, because merchant outbox was completely divorced from the standard communication methods in Second Life. It was using Open ID to identify, and in some cases that identification would fail, so people couldn't open it, and it was full of little funnel bugs that that made the debugging of the problems very difficult. Yeah, 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 okay. So in that aspect, that's true. It's different. We don't, we don't need to use open idea. We use your, we go through a cap, uh, like for every other, uh, service actually, uh, using the viewer. So, that's um, great to hear. Should, I'm, I'm yeah, glad it's, it's done in, in that way. Yeah. Yeah. I didn't have to suffer too much through it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah. I have a and, quick question here for a moment. This is okay. Let me just. Sorry, go ahead. I'll I'll speak okay. up later. This is with regards to those of us that use RLV who often have owners that actually impose these restrictions on us for being able to access our inventory. Is this going to be a problem when these functions are enacted to be able to manage our inventory with Marketplace? Because if I can't access my inventory, this may be, may be a potential problem with being able to manage the inventory. Annie, let's worry about RLV later. Our devs can deal with that. This is something coming from Linen Lab. I can understand that. Um, so uh, I did want to say um, it was a little bit of an oversight to not include our um, marketplace developer to talk a little um, talk about the API uh, that we're producing from SLM. So uh, I think in a couple of weeks, when you have your next meeting, we can bring him in and have him answer some questions for you as well. So uh, that'll give you a better opportunity to to chat more about this stuff. Um, and Oz, I don't know if we need to move on, but what we'll try and do is have a pretty regular presence at this meeting over the next, you know, couple of months as we're rolling this stuff out and people are trying things out on a DD and all that kind of stuff. So even if you have questions now, we should be able to answer them and obviously uh, feel free to ping Oz with questions or, uh, you know, directly reach out to me. So, Oz, um, do we have time for more questions, no, we or can, should we, can, we move on? We can on? spend a, a few more minutes on it. That's fine. Okay. It's, it's good. Um, then I actually have a question. Um, will the current items that are already on the marketplace using the current system be affected at all? Like, will those still be up? So, um, so basically, what, what we're going to have to do is, because the way that, that the marketplace works right now is inventory literally gets moved into the marketplace and then when it gets delivered it gets moved back out uh we're gonna have to change the way listings point at inventory because we no longer need to do inventory storage in the marketplace so we'll be we'll have to migrate listings so that they're not you know the marketplace doesn't have the inventory and it will instead just point at inventory that exists on the inventory server um so this is, um, and I know, I know there's a lot of fear <laughs> around migration because, um, the migration between X Street and Marketplace had a lot of problems. Um, and we had fewer problems with the migration to direct delivery, um, partly because we allowed, um, you know, merchants had to actually participate in the migration process. Um, this process we're planning to automate because it's, you know, a relatively simple, hey, let's send this inventory, you know, place this inventory in a new folder. It's just kind of like what we do today with delivering a purchase and then just add a pointer to it. Um, so, uh, 
Does that answer your question? Well, basically, so my only concern is that are people going to have to remake their listings, or will the old no. listings still function? Old listings will still function. There will be a period where their listings will not. Um, we're gonna we're gonna make the store unavailable. Uh, during the migration, so purchases and updates won't be allowed. And right now, we're trying to determine how long that's going to be. Um, and for really large merchants, where um, we have the ability to schedule like large merchants and work with them on timing. Let me try to understand this migration. Right now, I could put something in the marketplace and then totally delete it from my inventory. It will be in the marketplace. Will this uh, migration create an outbox folder of all the items that I have in the marketplace in my inventory? Do I get them back? You will get them back. They will be moved back into your inventory. Inside of this uh, marketplace folder, right? Yes, inside a special new marketplace folder. Okay, got it. Um, yes, and uh, Anamorph, I, I'm sure there will be some screaming. Um, we're trying to provide the ability for people to manually do um, some of the migration themselves. Uh, we're also going to be providing. Uh, yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, people will scream, but. We're trying to provide the people who will scream with some ways that they can feel in control and work through this stuff. So, um, so that, you know, without making radical changes, you know, there are some things that we can provide to give people a, more of a feeling like they're in control of this migration and these changes. Um, so, uh, so yeah. Oh, uh, missing. Um, we uh, we are hoping to have this on a DD before the end of this month. Wow, that soon. Well, we've been working on this for a really long time, so Super <laughs> doesn't feel purchase. that soon. <laughs> doesn't we're feel that soon to, to us. We're trying, to, <laughs> we're trying to be nice and open to you about what's coming, but we didn't. We, we don't don't want to do it too far in advance. <laughs> uh, you know, there's a point beyond which it's no longer really useful. Well, it sounds like it's going to be a pretty positive uh, function and feature for people. We hope so, well, yeah. Well, uh, you know, involving people who work with us every day in some aspects of design before design is set in stone also has some advantages. Well, that, that, yeah. we've, that we've done to some extent. So uh, yeah, you said that I was relieved. Um, are yeah. you having so when you say you're including these people, are you doing it through a, a group or, or are you having a, a user group specifically? Um, and if so, can some of us be invited to that? So um, so it's it started out as a private user group, um, which I think you know we can we can probably open up a little bit. I mean, part of the reason is this. I mean, we've been working on this project for. Like starting with our initial designs, I think we started meeting with merchants back in January and February. Nice. So we didn't want to um, have this be public for too long because people get, you know, they're like, oh my gosh, you've forgotten about us. And it's like, no, we haven't. We're actually working on this. Um, and so, um, so we, you know, we met with them. Um, really early this year and, um, and got some feedback and we'll, um, we'll be including them, you know, with our initial Aditi, uh, deploy of this. And then the idea is that we'll, we'll start to communicate more broadly, but we want to get some initial feedback from the third party viewer developers and this private group before we start talking about this. Uh, more broadly, and um, but we do plan to do that, and we want merchants who want to try this out on Aditi to be able to do that before we launch it as a beta on production. Well, I mean, and understanding that uh, merchants and third-party viewer developers uh, are going to have separate issues, um, yep. but if we're together with the merchants, um, that also helps third-party viewers understand the needs True. of the merchants, too. I just think it would be advantageous for everybody uh, if if uh, we could all be included in these um, 
with okay. these, these user groups. Yeah, um, we'll we'll figure out how to make that happen. And uh, I literally like this is the first time I'm talking about things at this point um, in the it's great project. That, so it's great um, that you've had like user inputs so, from so far back. That's that's really positive. Yeah, I mean, we literally did it like at the very. You know, we talked about we had some basic UI mocks. We talked about how things would work with them and asked, you know, gave them a couple of options, um, different levels of complexity um, versus, you know, flexibility. And um, and so it was, it, you know, some of the things that we thought that they would say didn't turn out to be true. So it's always good to, to hear it from the source. Okay, well, thank you very much for um, you guys coming and uh, taking the initiative to, to come and bring this to us. And, we'll have uh, more questions for you guys, uh, especially <laughs> once we see something. <laughs> once we right. can you know, have something to look at, uh, we'll probably inundate you. Okay, so uh, let's, let's see if we can run through the rest of the agenda, and then we'll, we'll move to just open issues. Um, the viewer pipeline actually has not changed very dramatically since last time. Um, there's a, a different maintenance viewer in the pipeline, but it's the usual sort of collection of bug fixes. Um, uh, the HTTP pipeline viewer, I had expected to be out by this time, so I put it on the agenda as out. In fact, it ran into a little snag in QA and has, uh, and, and Monty is busily correcting the problem and, and getting it back in the in the queue. But um, it's up, definitely up to, you know, real soon now. Um, we, we're really trying to get it out right, right now. Um, so, uh, yeah, exactly. Uh, other stuff, um, the best. Benchmark. So we've got project viewers out for the benchmark viewer and the Rift and the tool, uh, experience tools. Um, we hope to be moving uh, those into the release candidate pipeline pretty soon, uh, at least benchmark and experience tools. I don't know how quickly we're going to move uh, Oculus Rift support forward. I, I have to consult with people about that. Um, and... Uh, the let's see, uh, so that's the that's the viewer pipeline at the moment. There are a couple of other odds and ends out there that will that will show up in in due course. Um, the maintenance viewer that's out now has a bunch of voice fixes that it would be really good if you adopted or or at least looked at to see if you had the same problems. Um, so uh, merging that would be would be great. Um, you will want to, when pipelining comes out, you will want to merge that as quickly as you can um, because well, that's, it's... The whole merging thing is on my topic list, so... Right, so it's because it's it's really good. It's 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 real, really, you guys really got good. got all kinds of really good stuff, um, but before we can take the really good stuff, we have to deal with some of the really <laughs> not so good stuff. And uh, well, I'm here today. <laughs> yeah, that's... I, I understand the problem. Um so uh, anyway, um, uh, we are working uh, uh, in the ongoing or upcoming section. Uh, I'm going to take these out of order. We are still continuing to make group chat changes. Uh, we um, and we are going to continue not telling you which groups we're changing and when can we're changing I, them. Actually, on that topic, um, yeah. can I just point out that periodically from day to day, our support notices massive improvements and then massive unimprovements taking place. Should we be letting you know when we're noticing massive improvements? Because there was one no. day that uh, apparently there was no group chat lag at all. It was just working. And then the next day it was worse than ever. Really? Uh, yeah. One of the things we already know um, from the fairly deep look we've taken at, at chat system performance is that it is just unbelievably spiky. Um, there are lots and lots of times when even the worst groups 
are performing just beautifully, and then there are times when groups that are otherwise uh, normally pretty good just become horrible for a little while. Um, it's uh, it, and it um, there there is not a pattern actually. It it's about as uh, well. It's not that's not quite true. The larger the group is, the more frequently the performance is terrible. Um, you know, so there is some, there are some correlations, but there none of them are surprising ones, and none of them are ones that suggest how to fix it. Um, but even the best of them, the performance varies tremendously over time. And other than most of the bad problems happen when there are a lot of people online, and most of the good times happen when there aren't. Um, there isn't any real obvious correlation. Uh, so uh, we we are still making changes. We have some some groups have a set of changes, a set of tests test changes in um, in a test right now, and have had for a little while. Um, yeah. So um, we're continuing to work on it. We are still actively seized of the problem, uh, and. Uh, we're we're going to keep on we're going to keep on iterating on it until we either run out of ideas or or decide that we've accomplished enough. Um, <laughs> yeah, great. Uh, that's very helpful. Uh, I, I what I really want to know is will it change when we? Yeah, get it's it uh, it's correct. Terribly correct for the past seven years. So yeah, yeah, I understand. Um, so uh, skipping going going. Going backwards in in order down the list here, so uh, on the up, ongoing and upcoming, um, we are actively working on the hover problem. Needless to say, we have discovered some issues that make that a little more complicated than we thought it was initially. That's the way it is when you start actually implementing things. We're working on it. When we have an update to share with you, we'll share it. Um, so, uh, but it's getting attention. Um, which is which is great. Um, hopefully, we won't just discover it's impossible and give up. But um, oh no! Don't... Uh, <laughs> um, uh, texture and mesh fetching, uh, the C, the great CDN change, um, is still in progress uh, on. I don't know, a couple of hundred regions right now. I didn't take the trouble to count them, you know, look at the count before I before I jumped into this meeting, but it's it's on that order on the snack uh, small RC channel. Um, we are very happy with the results we've gotten. Uh, it, it did turn out that because of the way we initially populated that channel, we ended up not making it very directly comparable to... Um, the main channel in that uh, we overloaded it with busy regions. Um, so uh, we have more agents per, on average, more agents per region in that channel than we have in other channels, um, which made it a little bit more difficult to, um, to uh, make, to, to make, Apples to apples comparisons with some of the data we're gathering, um, but uh, actually, when we looked at how many active regions, active agents there were, and looked at the overall performance of the of the regions, um, we're pretty happy with the results. Actually, we think that if if we had overloaded sim hosts in the same way using the previous version of the code that didn't offload the load to CDNs that those regions really would have been seriously terrible. Uh, and they weren't seriously terrible. They were just not quite as good as they should have been. Um, so um, that part was pretty good, actually. Uh, so the plan is to uh, roll the CDN support to all of Blue Steel next week um, and, uh, you know, get a bigger sample and one that we have a better historical reference for because we're not going to change the population of Blue Seal. We're just going to put, uh, in fact, we're going to leave the ones that are on the snack channel where they are. Uh, some got removed from it um, in the course of discovering that we had overdone it. Um, but uh, we're going to leave the two populations the same so that we can look at 
the historical numbers we have on Bluesdale, for example, this week with what we get starting after we make the change next week. Um, so we should see it uh, more widely. Um, and uh, hopefully by next week we will also have the, uh, the HTTP pipelining viewer out. And if people use the combination, I think that they will be astonished at the difference. Um, so I'm really looking forward to that. Which part are you measuring? Well, I mean, what statistics are you gathering that you are rolling this very slowly? Well, we're gathering a lot of statistics. We're gathering statistics on how many requests the the uh, we are not getting at the at the sim hosts and at the at the asset system because the CDN is is uh, servicing them. Um, those numbers have been huge. Uh, it turns out that the CDN is basically taking virtually all the load. Uh, it's really great. Um, so that part is, is fantastic. Um, the other big metrics that uh, we developed prior, to, that we, we, we worked out quite far in advance, actually, um, were measures of the, uh, what is it, the queue length, Monty, the queue length and the servicing time for for uh, HTTP requests on the SIM hosts? Is that, am I stating that reasonably well? That is correct. Right. So, uh, and we developed thresholds for each of those that were, um, this is a warning level and this is a, a, a critical level. And what we've been looking at is how frequently, one of the things we've been, one of the other things we've been looking at is how frequently regions are at those warning and critical levels. Um, and after, after looking at this, Monty's been, you know, working on this problem for a long time and working really hard. And um, he basically became convinced quite a long time ago, long before we started rolling out the CDN changes, uh, that um, those were one of the best predictors we have about whether or not people would be unhappy with what's going on in regions. If if those, because because while we were using the the sim host Apache service, the the, the web service on the sim hosts for all this texture and mesh fashion. We're also using it for lots of other things. Um, and many of those other things involve are, are critical and timing critical to things like smooth region crossings and, and so forth. So if you, um, if the, if the sim was spending, if the, if the sim host was spending all of its Apache time, um, passing out the same textures to everybody, then uh, it was not doing all those other things that were necessary to get timely updates and, and smooth region crossings. So I bet that uh, HTTP traffic, if you if you count byte-wise how much bandwidth it's used, it's probably over 90% that's going to be removed now. Yeah, it's still it many is over requests, 90%. It's well over 90%. Yeah, but many requests, but they're, they're very short and you know, compared to texture fetching. Right. So we have a lot of requests. Uh, much more of them are, are uh, um, now a much higher percentage are HTTPS because they're, they're things that um, have security implications that texture and mesh fetching didn't have. Um, but... Um, the uh, so the mix has changed very significantly, um, and that may have some implications for how we do our server tuning. I don't know. We'll we'll get to that later on in the process. But the um, but yeah, the the, the profile of, of what requests are being handled at the sim hosts and how long they're taking to to do to we have any very statistics on how the CDN itself is handling? Do they have any trouble with? It? So far, we have not observed any problems. Um, I mean, if they got into trouble, what we would, see, the way we would see it is that those requests would come back, would come through, right? If they were letting things age out of the cache, we would get more requests for the same objects, and we're not seeing that. Um, yeah, the, that's great to hear. The um, it, despite the fact that we've got a couple hundred regions on it now, I mean, it's not that's not a big number yet. Um, that's why we're making it a bigger number. So right now, um, 
the snack uh, RC is a couple hundred. I, th I think at one point it was up to 270 something. I think it's somewhat lower than that right now. I, I didn't look. Um, the so, so uh, food steel is, a, is in the neighborhood of a thousand, um, and we're going to add blue steel. So you know we'll be bumping the numbers significantly, but of course nowhere near main grid numbers yet. So that's about five percent of the grid, right? Somewhere around that. Uh, I don't know. Um, but it's 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 a lot more. It's so um, so you know, um, and very likely what we will end up uh, what we will end up deciding to do is to um, you know roll it to some more of the of the RCs before we go to the main channel. Um, but. That's speculation on my part, but that's that's I think that's a pretty good bet. Um, there's a different bug fix simulator release going on to the other two RCs next week. Um, so uh, the short version of the whole uh, CDN thing is that it's going really, really well. Um, we're very happy. Just to roll it out. Push the button. <laughs> well, ship it. You know what? Uh, there have been enough times in the past when we have just decided to roll it out that it hasn't gone well. That uh, yeah, definitely. yeah. The, the, <laughs> the trick is the trick is to dis discriminate those two times when you can just ship it and when you have to take it carefully. Right. Uh, this one is just taking. This one is just taking uh, work off the servers. There is yeah, nothing the, added to it. The failure modes. The failure modes are very different, though. Um, I think it involves tarot cards when you're trying to determine that. Yeah. Right. Um, okay. Anyway, so that you, that uses up my agenda items. Um, Ed, you had one. Where's Ed? It's not here. Is he not here? <laughs> Izzy's not here, which means it, the question probably I, isn't going I, to get answered. I think Izzy may be out today because he didn't answer that. You, I, I did send him email to give him a heads up that you were planning to ask him something, and he didn't respond. So I, I'm, I'm afraid he okay. must not be on, online today. Well, I'm going to throw it out anyhow. Um, Worley, if you happen to have the link to that juror, could you throw it out, please? Please. Um, there was a JIRA, there's a JIRA open about extending um, support to non-premium members for certain things. And... Yes, I remember triaging it. triaging it. Who it was, but it was a Linden stated that basic support could uh, be reached. Gary, okay, Gary Linden stated that basic support, uh, basic users could still get support by calling the billing numbers. And it was pointed out again. Maybe, Mister, do you have that one ready? There you there go. There it is. There. There's the link. I just want to know if this is true that we could tell our users to contact, uh, to phone these numbers if they were having what was obviously a server-side problem. Uh, and you know what I mean. Uh. Uh, I, it, it would be inappropriate for me to comment on anything of the sort, one way or the other. Uh, I have absolutely no special knowledge with respect to any of that. Um, That's what I figured. But uh, Gary, Gary may or may not be a better source of information than I am. I, I don't even know that much. Um, sorry. Um, so uh, apologies, but there you go. Is that something you could find out, Oz, and get back to us on? Uh, hang on a second. Yeah, you had to wait for it to be AFK, though. Just to be here. <laughs> Still counts. Yeah? On that number, Jess, I'd ask.
Uh, yeah, I'll, 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 yeah, I'll get back to you. I guess. Um, I, yeah. I don't know. I'll try. I don't know what I'm going to be able to do. I mean, the the problem, as I understand it, is is pretty simple. There are an awful lot of basic users out there, and yeah. they're not paying us anything. Um, and well, and the that other thing means is, that there's a limit to what we can do to support them. I mean, that's the, the blunt. Is, that's but, the blunt uh, fact. Like where where is the law, the line drawn? Uh, is it yeah. would it be reasonable to if we send a, an email to Izzy? Maybe like first of all, can Izzy answer that even? Um, Izzy would be in a better position to answer it than I am. Uh, would it be whether or not he could answer it? I don't know. Sure, copy me and then I'll okay. Uh, I'll, I'll provide context. Uh, so I have a quick question about VS 2013. Is there any kind of wiki up for that yet? There is not, but we're just we're just barely getting started on the Visual Studio 2013 part of the Tools Upgrade project. Um, I can give you sort of a very short form of where we are on that. We have we have either just or are just about to finish building all the prerequisites for the viewer on. Uh, the Mac. Um, we've been doing that one first, primarily because um, there's a uh, we have to sign our executables differently, and we need to be on 10.9 to do that. And right now, we're having to whenever we release a viewer, we have to copy it over to 10.9 so that we can manually sign it. It's kind of a pain in the neck. We can't build it into our normal build and release machinery uh, and automate it. So. Um, so we're focusing on the Mac first. Um, uh, we have gotten to the point where we're just about ready to start trying to build the viewer itself. Um, and uh, with all the new tools, with the new version of AutoBuild and, the, and Xcode 6 uh, on 10.9. Um, so uh, having, having gotten that far, we've, we've also made some progress on Linux. Um, on that, uh, mostly because it's it's uh, it's incidental to doing the the uh, uh, incidental to doing the, the the Mac changes. There's lots of overlap there, um, and uh, we are just getting started on that process for Visual Studio 2013. So um, we we've, we've just built. I think we've just got a couple of the packages built. Um, so uh, we're we're making progress, but uh, VS twenty thirteen in particular, it's, it's very small project progress at this point. Um, I think that the Visual Studio will go faster than the Mac changes did. Um, I'm hoping, um, but we'll, we'll yeah. See. The the Mac thing is a whole new and different compiler that you are dealing with. So. Right, and it has some bugs that are not fun to deal with. Well, we're trying to work work through that. Um, but uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, Cinder, nice to say about Mac. Cinder, it works for you, but remember how much trouble we had with this uh, one file that it won't compile with the optimization. You know, it's you can spend the days trying to fix your code when it turns out that it's a compiler that's producing garbage code. Right. So, we we haven't even um, we haven't even gotten to that point yet. Since the only tests we've been able to run are the are the unit tests within each package. Um, So, uh, but we're we're making progress on it. Um, so, um, and we'll we'll uh, try to share all that with you as quickly as we can. Any time frame on how much longer it's going to take, though? You know, my boss keeps asking me that too. <laughs> Soon, <trade laughs> I'm af I'm afraid I don't have any better answer for you than I've had for for them. When it's uh, ready. When it's ready, yeah. trademark. Right. Uh, okay, is it my turn? Sure, go ahead. Okay.
Um, first, I want to prefix this rant with uh, a kudos, because Lunin Lab has been doing some fine work lately, and uh, that's much appreciated. Um, and, you know, this marketplace thing, hearing that you guys included content creators early on, um, <laughs> good, good on you guys. Uh, we have a dilemma, though. Uh, the problem is, um, we need to get group ban out, we need to get uh, SL share out, uh, we would like to be able to get out um, experience tools when, when it's time. Uh, you guys got some other stuff that, as you said earlier, we need to, or we will certainly want to merge and get out as soon as possible. Um, but we're sort of uh, stuck on a couple issues. Um, so AIS3, we're in the process of merging that. Uh, and um, even if we manage to merge that, so we, we're not putting things out, we're not releasing things out of order. So we need to get AIS3 into Firestorm first. Then we can deal with, you know, all the other cool stuff that you guys have. Um, and uh, so we can get it out and it gets widely adopted and everybody wins. Okay. The problem is, here's the but, uh, there are some uh, bugs in AIS3 which will never pass our QA. Um, and even if I bypassed our QA and made them rage quit in the process and we released with these bugs, um, we would get, like, people would rage with the amount of users that we have. So here are the bugs. Um, and some of these are related. Is is your uh, scripted bug thing are working, if I just put out... The bug number? No. Oh, damn. Okay. I, I keep uh, meaning to build a new one. Uh, okay, I'll but. just uh, do the whole copy-paste. Uh, yeah, and so the other problem, too, for us is we're faced with an, a, an issue with our support team. I would lose my support team, and, and so it's a, it's a chain reaction. Um, so even if we had AIS3 merged, we can't release it yet until some of these issues are dealt with. So these two are, I, we believe, related. And I'll give you guys a couple of minutes to look at those quickly. Uh, okay, well, uh, so 61, right, uh, we have fixes for those. So, uh, that's fantastic, but I, I, we need to be able to see them. <laughs> uh, is Veer here? No. No, um, left. Uh, yeah, they're, right, they're in Viewer Tiger. Are they? Okay. Both of them? Yeah. Um, hang on a second. Let me... They're probably commented with their internal numbers. Uh, so the first one, Avatar Distorted When Changing Outfits, is Maint 4158. Um... Which doesn't do us a lot of good because we can't see those. No, but you, they'll show up that way in the release notes is why I mention it. Um, and the other one is... Uh, Mate 4189. And that you should see... You should see those in the change comments for um, somewhere in Viewer Tiger. I think. Okay, now Worlds is saying that if that's in your RC, uh, it, it's still not resolved. Can you? Well, wait a minute. Let me fact? let me let me just double check which viewer they're in. Which? Uh, no, they are not marked as being. Yeah, they anyway, okay, I guess they're not it actually in Viewer Tiger, um, but they're on their way. Okay, that's They are cool. coming, and, and in fact, they, um, oh, they are uh, there, there are some aspects of them that require fixes on the back end as well. So, um. Rose is saying, Rose is saying that, I don't know if you're watching local. Um, um I'm. I wasn't, but I'm trying to catch up. Uh, 
Let me... Let's see, are there test viewers here? Forgive me for not knowing in advance what you were going to ask about. But, um, I should have gave you a head up. Although I only actually got this list last night, so. Uh, yeah, I don't see I don't see references to test viewers here. Hang on a second. I'll see if I can get a pointer for you. Uh, anyway, the, um, they are being they, they are working their way through the, the process, um, okay. so the fixes will be out shortly. Uh, and I've got a, a couple others. I'm afraid. Um, okay. Uh, here's one that's sort of sits on its own. Seems to be unrelated to the others. Um, although there are, uh, the rest are also attachment related. Um, let me just throw them all out, in fact. Uh, what is this? Oh, this is reported against 3710. Okay, so there's okay. Uh, four of them here. Um, and they're, they're all attachment. Uh, three of them are um, LSL affiliated in some way uh, with attachment functions. But um, they're all very significant and um uh, Going out to you know as many users as we have, it would just be uh, you know really bad. Um, so I kind of have to make these prerequisites before we can get AIS three out, and thus everything else that comes after it. I was really hoping we'd be able to catch up to you guys quickly with this cycle, uh, and it's not looking like that's going to happen. Um, we're gearing up for another release to keep with our three month cycle. Um, and uh, probably be at the end of November after Thanksgiving um, and beginning of December. Uh, and it, it's again, it's not going to have group ban or, or any of that kind of cool stuff. Uh, so we're going to get some backlash from our, our users because uh, they're really wanting group ban and, and all the really great work that you guys have been doing. Um, so I'm, I'm really hoping that, and I know you have limited resources, Oz, but I'm really hoping you'll be able to get people on some of these bugs. Well, hang on a second. Okay, uh, Veer says those f the fixes for those first two are in Viewer Lion. Although the the issues are not so annotated, I should fix that. Where else have you tried that, Viewer Lion? I, 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 you know, let me see which one that is. Within our capabilities, uh, you know, the last three are LSL related. We obviously can't do anything about LSL. No. Um, hang on a second. Uh, viewer line is. If we could fix these, we would fix these because we really do want to get. Uh, I, and it's going to come down on on me, you know, in a heavy way when we do this release without group ban. Um, that was it's it's a really anticipated feature. Uh, people are desperate to get it in Firestorm, and so it's very disappointing that we're not going to be able to have it. Okay, that's Viewer Tiger. Uh, 
Uh, we've talked about cherry picking. Right. I, I'd like to do that, um, but uh, some of my senior devs aren't in too much in favor of, of merging things out of order because it becomes problematic later. It may still be possible, but uh, yeah. Yeah, unless they're like, if it's single things, like little fixes here and there, we can do that. Right, um, and and I I uh, totally understand that. Um, well, okay, so let's deal with these two sets of things separately. The uh, I don't see a viewer build based on viewer lion right now, so I'm not sure where that is. I think it's the maintenance release after next. Um, we've been trying to make the maintenance releases smaller and uh, because they take they don't take as much time to get through the pipeline that way. So, the world uh, just gave a link to uh, Lion latest. Yeah. Um, right. So, you should try that in that one. Oh. Okay. Note, put notes in the issue, in the, in the, uh, in the bugs about that. Um, it may be that. So some of the changes, I think some of the changes for those joint offset issues um, also need to be propagated back into the appearance service before they'll be completely fixed. Um, and that's a separate release stream, obviously, from the viewer. Um, I'm not sure where that is in the process, except that I know it's not out yet. Um, so uh, I'll, uh, let's edit this onto the agenda for, for next time, if okay. you would, and I will definitely have an update for you on that, that part of it. Um, and that way also time. you guys know where, where we are right now with things. Um, right. Because I know you um, want us to get uh, uh, the uh, experience tools out, and uh, that's pretty important, but we're just sort of stuck with this. And the voice files updates. And the, and the voice updates, yeah, I understand, right. Um, Okay, so then the other things that you mentioned, the, the collection of attachment issues. So the first of the four um, seems not related to LSL. The last three uh, seem to be related to LSL calls. Okay, so let me look at this first one. Where behaves it kind of the same point? Yeah, we could probably do the voice stuff, actually. Because that, that's fairly se separate from everything else. Yeah, knowing which which ones they are, that would be a benefit. <laughs> I've seen them. I mean, it wouldn't be too hard to find them. Have a look at that tank if you can. Okay, 4196... Uh, sorry, this. Um, six, four, eight, seven, 60, four, six, four, eight, seven is main 4196. And it looks like we've done some investigation on it, but haven't got a fix yet. Um, invalid attachment point. Hmm. Okay, well, um, so I don't have anything good to say about that one. Uh, the detach from avatar changes. So are those, what are they reported against? Let me look. I 
we we are making a set of changes. around that stuff um, as part of the fixes for our experiences. Okay, well, um, I guess the best I can do right this minute is to say, send me email with all of these in it, and I will. Okay, and we'll we'll put it on the factor it in. I think day. it looks like the the um, the attach bugs are probably uh, related in in some ways to some things we've been working on in support of experiences. So it, it, there's liable to be some overlap there, and we can get them fixed as part of that. We'll see. Thank you. Um, I, I suspect that those aren't viewer problems. No, I think a lot of these are, are server, especially the last three. Um, yeah, well, if they're not viewer problems, you don't have to. It's not yeah. going to make any difference whether you hold up your release or not, right? Well, it does if we really because it's AIF three specific, um, so we don't have the issue. Uh, so if we do release with it, though, uh, with the users that we have, um, uh, our support will just, yeah. Okay. So um, I'll, I'll put it on the agenda for the next uh, meeting, and, and even if you guys had fixes right now, we can't do anything about it anyways because we're still in the process of merging IS three, uh, but. Um, It'd be, be great if within the next couple of weeks, maybe, um, you guys could have a look at these. Yeah, well, I'll and at least get you busy. an update on, I'll at least get you an update on what the status is. Um, Thank you. Uh, well, we'll see how that, how that plays out. But um, we have been doing work in the general neighborhood of all of those things, so there's some hope. And uh, that is uh, pretty much it for me. Oh, Gibson has a question. Oh, yeah, actually, um, we did recently um, make some progress on the group tags affecting loading in that we figured out some of why it happens. It's, it has to do with um, the changing the group tag, interrupting the process of sending you a complete update on the on the region. Um, I don't know the, the details myself, but um, but uh, it was, you know, one of those gee, we didn't know there was a relationship here things, and it's good to find one of those for group tags because, in fact, I've always wondered about that. Um, and it the the workaround is don't change your group tag when you first arrive. <laughs> that's, I mean, that's what it amounts to. It only happens if you haven't yet gotten a complete update for the region you're in. Um, and you change your group tag while you're receiving that update. Because you end up interrupting the process of sending you that update. And um, so the workaround is... Leave your group tag alone until things have finished resing. This sounds like uh, the yeah, workaround. Well, don't accept it right away. 
for teleport bugs that were recommended at one time, which was teleport naked, and it goes much faster. <laughs> well, <laughs> yeah, I remember that. I, yeah, well, that's okay. a good way to get banned from a few places. Yeah. Uh, that's I'm, that's I'm, pretty I'm, funny. That, I, don't, I didn't know that one. It actually works. When you, when you remove all the attachments, you teleport about twice as fast. Yeah, but then you show up in a general region completely bloody naked and immediately get banned by an admin, and you're like, What? I was told to do this. Hey, but you get there fast. <laughs> exactly, and you leave just as fast as you got there. <laughs> I, I, I'm just envisioning all the people that over the past five years or so have gotten used to changing their group tag to help things load. Um, <clears throat> yeah, this will be interesting. Be the opposite now. Hmm. Yeah. And it's really, just... when people do teleport uh, to, say, a group or something, they'll often right away put on their group tag that uh, is associated with the club or whatever it is that they're doing. Yeah, change the group tag before you teleport. Yeah, well, yeah, tr yeah right. Right? If you're about <laughs> to I'll teleport I'll into telling. your role-playing region, change the group tag and then teleport. I'll, Jessica, I'll you, know what? you know what? You, you can do, you can uh, make a timer in the viewer. So if somebody tries to make uh, a tag change, you put a big warning box. You just got here. Are you sure you want to change your tag right now? <laughs> yeah. Perhaps waiting a bit will be more useful. <laughs> <laughs> we'll do a, a model after a model after a model. Well, model. If, if people were using our viewer, then that might help. But they're not. They're using yours. So... Yeah, but uh, we eventually get your stuff. It just yeah. takes a while. Yeah, well, that doesn't solve the problem for us right now, does it? By then, we'll have fixed the bug. Um, anyway. Okay. Big blog uh, post from everybody. Big blog post from everybody tomorrow. We want everybody to take a week off of using third-party viewers and use the Linden Lab viewer so that this bug will be totally exposed and get worked on faster. <laughs> Are we all in agreement? <laughs> Hey, now we'll see the eyes rage quit. Because those are, there are several of us that still use the right click because of uh, interest testing taking so long to be fixed. Well, yeah, but interesting is just broken. That's, everybody knows that. Well, we have, we, we certainly have our share of complaints uh, with the last release with Project Interesting. It actually is kind of funny because. Um, there seems to be two sides to it. Uh, for a lot of people, things are much faster. Certainly for me, with with the new interesting work, uh, the scene loads really, really fast. But uh, we've had polar opposite complaints uh, once we released um, our latest build. Uh, a lot of people saying it, it's way, way slower for them, like unusable slow. Uh, I'm yeah, not sure I'm, why that is. I'm hearing Interestingly, when I, when I actually got on interesting, it was... So retardedly fast, it made me have whiplash. But there are always those certain things that just will never load. Just never in a million years will it load until I magic, until I force it. It's my right clicking it. Yeah, it's see, there, it's there always is specific for items. Me, it, it reses extremely fast, but then when I go and teleport up into my building platform and then come back down, it's incredibly slow. So it's like it's. It's like it's fixed, but it's not fixed. In order, yeah, in order for interesting to raise everything, you have to sacrifice a virgin on a full moon's night, and then it works perfectly. Yeah, but then it only works for that night. It doesn't work <laughs> for when you're in here during the day. <laughs> Maybe you didn't use enough uh, blood, you know. It has to be the exact amount. And, and you can't do it on a Wednesday. It'll fail every time on a Wednesday. But seriously, interesting, interesting has some problems with uh, some objects missing, especially after teleports. And, you know, you have to jump around a bit for it to, 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 and zoom in and out to try to convince to, to rest stuff. Well, yeah, but no, even I then mean, sometimes I... it doesn't work. Like, like Monty said, I had to right click the catwalk to make that finally load in. And I had to this, do the this... same thing the last time I was at this meeting, too. This auditorium had, I... seems to have a particular seems to be prone to um, not loading for some reason. Yeah, it, yes, it always seems well, to be certain specific items. It's never, it's always the same items. It's never just 
some things that'll work and sometimes it won't. It's always that one set of items. Like my Say. head, for instance. My head just never works on teleport. I have to write have you, myself. Have you noticed that? What, what's happening for me right now is that it, it seems like my leg my house, which is a legacy gram house, doesn't want to raise at time. So it seems like it's opposite the opposite from what it was when it was mesh. Mesh wouldn't was a big problem. Now it seems like it's legacy prims. Oz, are you working? Yeah, that or, seems or, to be true. Are you guys working on interesting issues still? Uh, not specifically. No. You might want to, because it's still pretty bad. <laughs> it we're, seems interesting. We're working on the things we're hours. working on right now. That's. Yeah. I mean, we've got an awful lot. That you've you've just we've just been through the the rather ridiculously long list of things we, we are doing. Well, it still has some quirks to it, though, Oz. It's better than it was, but it still has some quirks to it. Well, at, at least before the current interesting changes, you could at least alt-left-click yourself, zoom out and zoom in, and everything would come back. Now that's not, a, not always a viable fix. Sometimes now you have to right-click on the things. So, in my opinion, it's actually kind of worse. Okay. Did you try plugging in and out? Teleporting in and out? That actually makes it worse, too. No, I mean, I mean, uh, unplug the computer and plug it back in. <laughs> oh, yeah, I do that every other day. I mean, my operating system can't stand it because I never turn it off before I do it, but my operating system is... Well, Windows 7, it complains about everything. But if it fails for same object every time, perhaps you can uh, describe it in a bug and send some developer there, because there are a lot of things that fail always at the same, in the same way. Yeah, I might actually have to look into that, because if I actually can get a certain specific list of certain specific things that will never load, and that might actually, it might actually end up just being a server thing. Not and an thing. Uh, it, it's entirely possible that it's a, it's a, you know, it's a server thing. Um, if you're, you're going to spend that time, um, do it on our viewer. Sorry. Well, you can check if it's a server thing. You can try several viewers. You know, like try some legacy and old ones. And if it shows, then it's not a server. It's sending data. It's just not being shown. Right. Um, well, over the next couple of weeks, I'll see if I can figure out anything. I'm looking forward to uh, seeing uh, what Monty's been working on. Because I, oh, I heard some good things about that. The, pi the pipeline stuff. It's like, boom, done. Yeah. Uh, he's I'm looking good. forward to the push of CDN because, uh, especially for us overseas, it makes a huge difference with the reduced latency. Yeah, well, you're in it now. Or you should be. I haven't looked. The, 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 if yeah, they've taken me out of that region. Yeah. There are not too many techniques. When it's generally available, teleporting around should be a much more pleasant experience. All right. Um, okay, I'm 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 done. And actually, I do need to get going. Yeah, I do too. I actually need to get going as well. Thank you, everybody. Have a good weekend. Thanks, all. Good time, Jess. Have a good night. We have a good weekend, Jess. Absolutely. Have a good weekend, good weekend us. Yeah, have fun, people. An hour and twenty-one minutes for this meeting. Man, that was a long meeting. <laughs> Had to make up yeah, for the ones where Jessica meeting. wasn't here. <laughs> and with that, I'll day, say, man. I'll say, happy Thanksgiving to any Canadians and poof. Mac bugs, I just did. Uh, happy Halloween, everybody. And poof.